All right, welcome back guys to part two of my little street food series of Si Lom, one of the most popular tourist destinations in the whole of Bangkok. Today, we're at the business end of Si Lom, up by Saladeng BTS station. We're gonna be eating where the local office workers eat on a little street, absolutely jam-packed full of street food. And then we're gonna head down to a little known market make our way through the little alleyways into a little food court. I've got a little special surprise down there. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. Let's go. All right, so I'm gonna take a little walk up and down, show you as much as I can. Now I usually, being a creature of habit that I am, get one of two things. One is a cow mok guy, which it looks like they've still got some left. And two are some bat meat egg noodles from the stall right at the start, which are really, really good. But I wanted to try something a little bit different today. So I'm gonna have a look around and um, the biryani is calling me, but I'm gonna try and resist. Now, a uh, big shout out to Ariel that just came and said hello to me. Uh, she watches the channel. She works in a school just here. So I said to her, what did you have? Maybe I'll have the same as you. And she said, well, she always gets the egg noodles as well, the bat me. So um, yeah, she couldn't help me out with that one, but we might end up going back there. There's an awesome Somtum shop here called Hai Somtum Convent. Both sides of the street is just completely full of these like yellow umbrellas and underneath is different street food. Ironically, they're covered with uh, McDonald's signs as well. Like, I've probably come at the wrong time. Like, I wanted to show you guys that it's busy, but also I've come at lunchtime and it's an office worker thing. Ah, so this is, Tam, is this Tamsang? It looks like she's got Pad Kapow, Pad Bung. Not sure. Anyway, I won't be queuing in this. What else have we got? We got some boat noodles. Quit Rua. <laughs> Definitely came at the wrong time. I wanted to show you it was busy, as I said, but didn't want to show you it was that busy. Uh, busy to the point where I can't actually get anything to eat. So maybe we'll have to walk to the other one and come back, but that'll probably be just as busy. What are they eating? Quit Diao Care. Yeah, these look legit. I'm gonna get these. Okay, so this shop is called Quit Diao Care, which alludes to the fact that they're Chinese uh, hacker noodles, I think. I, you could correct me on that if anyone knows. Um, but they usually come with fish balls, prawn balls, all sorts of different stuff. Then uh, mordang, which is the red pork in like a tom yum soup, but I'm gonna get mine dry. They also do khao mordang, which is the barbecue red pork. Recommended by Channel 5 Workpoint AST, yeah? And then with crispy pork, Mark recommends. I wonder what Mark that is. Come in, tom yum hang. Yes, yeah, right. Tom yum hang. Uh, tom yum hang. Uh, yeah, right. Right. It's not bad. 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 It's not I'll soup yet, my cup. Cup. She's gonna mix that up. So chilies, peanuts, lime juice, red pork. Thai mod. Oh ho. Cup. You mad? So they're out of eggs, guys. Oh, it is Wiens. What, Mark? All right, so let's have a look what we've got here, guys. So I've got a, uh, I've got the noodles in one bowl. So I said yak, yak, soup yak. So just split the soup. Um, look at the colour on this soup. That's pure bony goodness. So, like leng, leng is the. It's a Chinese word for like backbone soup. Spring onions, very simple. Looks like there's a load of pepper in here as well, but look at that flaky, flaky pork meat. Oh. We've got some lok chin mo, which is pork balls. Fried pork ball. 
I've got a boil, half a boiled egg. I've got some of that smoky morning. Some tofu pieces. A uh, little bit of cabbage. And then underneath, we've got the flat bat meat, almost like fettuccine. And that's been covered in a chili oil, which I'll show you in a sec. Homemade chili oil, loads and loads of lime juice. I've said May Wan, so I don't want it sweet. This looks unbelievable, to be fair. Loads and loads of peanuts, so it's spicy, sour. Yeah, I like this. All right, so spicy, sour, loads and loads of noodles. 60 baht, I think this was a bargain. I might have got the large for 70 baht, I'm not sure. Sour from the lime juice is savoury. It's smoky and spicy and rich from that chilli oil. You've got the peanuts adding a nice little crunch. They've been toasted up as well, so they're quite smoky. I like the little cabbage touch. Mm. And she'd finished it all off with a little bit of garlic oil. Now I said, I don't want fish balls because I just don't really like them, but I have got uh, scent bar, so fish noodles. So noodles made of fish. Mm. They're very good. Bouncy, firm, not too fishy, but they've also been coated with all that chili oil, the garlic. All right, I'll try the old, try the pork ball, I think. She told me that was pork, but it might be, but it tastes like fish. Like a fishy sponge. Could take or leave that, I'll be honest. Oh. The pieces of tofu, I like. Again, everything's just coated in that oil and the lime juice, the spring onions, The mordang is, uh, as you'd expect, slightly on the sweeter side. Mm. It's good though, smoky, a little bit sweet. This is a top quality bowl of soup. And for me, this is what it's all about. Just a tiny little street car, few silver tables, few aluminium tables out here, packed every day. Auntie at the back, overseeing everything, knows exactly what she's doing. Every single bowl, it's like a, it's like military precision, muscle memory. She knows exactly what's going in each bowl and she's getting different orders. I've been fussy, I'm not saying, I'm saying uh, I don't want it sweet, I do want it really spicy, I don't want this, I do want that. And she's able to remember all the orders and just keep it going one after the other. It's just a great little street to come down and this is a great little stall on this street. Like, I've been doing a couple of shopping mall videos, as you know, because a lot of you, I've realised you know, it might be your first time to Thailand and I understand why you want to go to a shopping mall because it's safe, it's clean. You kind of can get everything without needing to know how to speak Thai. This is like your step up from that. Soy Convent is your next step up from the shopping malls, all right? This is your first like street experience. Come down here at lunchtime, loads of people speak English. Even if the sellers don't speak English, there's so many office workers here, as I said, because this is where all the office workers eat. Um, that someone will definitely be able to help you out. You know what, then I'm just going to pour a little bit of this soup on. And if you're wondering why I don't just get soup in the noodles, why do I add my soup afterwards? Um, it's just because sometimes I just don't like the soup or sometimes there's too much soup in there. Maybe I'm just a control freak. I like to add my own. Mm. This is like... The soup broth is super rich. This is all just pure, like pork bone goodness. Fresh, clean, decent, really, really good. So there's a couple of things in the bowl that I would just leave out, like I wouldn't eat these. The pork balls. I'll tell you what I would usually get. I would have just got crispy pork, but I've promised to get off the crispy pork for one month now. 
the Mudang, and I thought it was coming with, I thought it was coming with uh, dumplings as well, but it doesn't. But it's not often that I don't have to season a soup. I just told her what I wanted. It came and it's perfect. I could have it spicier, but doesn't really need it. Job done. Yeah, guys, that one was uh, that one was up there. That was. <laughs> That was decent. That was really, really good. Like I said, a couple of things that I wouldn't have in there, which they're not my personal preference, but the noodles themselves and the actual flavorings on the noodles, I could eat that. I could eat that every day. Um, I just want to show you a couple of more things, but like, look, it gets pretty same, same after a while. There's a lot of fried stuff. There's a lot of fruit. There's a lot of fruit shakes. Uh, there's some Tamsang restaurants. There's noodle soup restaurants. There's basically everything you need on one street, and it is only about 150 meters long probably so it's a great spot so here we got a quick yell guide oh which is very very good alloy mark up getting louder so yeah if i would if i hadn't had those noodles guys i would come here tinny alloy mark so look to be honest i could have just done the whole video on this street because there is so much i've probably got to got three or four different dishes down here but as i said definitely get those or get the Kwitiao Gai, or get the Kao Mok Gai. And the Isan's pretty good as well, but it can tend to be on the sweet side. So just say Mei Wan if you don't want it too sweet. But it's just amazing how many people are actually out. Hi. Hi guys. It's amazing how many people are actually out every lunchtime here. Um, as I said, it's all workers, so it's cheap and it's pretty good. All right, guys, next up, soy at 10. We're going to hit soy at 10, soy sib, okay? But it's far too hot to walk, so I'm going to grab a bike. He's not interested. Soy sib, no? Soy sib. No? Soy sib. Bye bye. Oh. You don't want to go? Okay. Soy sip, man. My soy sip. Cut. Okay. He's obviously on his lunch break, that one. Yes, yeah, so we've got all of these buildings. Loads of hotels, loads of offices. So this and Saturn make up the business district. Right, so you get off at Soy 10. I got off the other side of the road and crossed, so I couldn't be bothered to wait in the traffic. The entrance just looks like a tiny little market stall. There's some sunglasses, some clothing, a couple of food shops. You walk down this alleyway, it looks like a dead end, and it opens up into like uh, an undercover, bigger market. And this has clothing, trainers, just a typical Thai market. But you get to the back, and there's, as you'd expect in any Thai market, there's a big food court. There's some all right bits here, actually. You can get sunglasses, loads of different types of clothing. It's very, it's very Thai, it's very local Thai. You wouldn't expect to find this just in Ceylon. In fact, I don't think a lot of people even know this is here. All right, and this is my domain. I could probably do a week's worth of videos just in this food court alone. I mean, there are dozens and dozens of stalls worth of food that all look really good. All right, so after walking around this market for about 25 minutes, um, it turns out the cow soy shop isn't here anymore, all right? So I can't get cow soy. Um, so I don't know what to do. Everyone's pretty much packing up. I've been told the roast duck's the best thing here. Been told the roast duck's the best thing here, but I just had roast duck uh, yesterday, so. I'm at a loss, guys, I'm at a loss. If you do want that cow soy, just go to the original branch on Charon Nakon. What a great tour guide that I am for you guys just to take you to loads of places that aren't actually open. So look, guys, this happens sometimes. You're looking for a place in Bangkok. It's either closed down, it's moved somewhere else, especially in the last two years, this happens. Um, everywhere in this market is shutting up now. It's nearly three o'clock. It's more of a morning market. So I could just get something now but it's the end of the day, like everyone's putting stuff away. What I think's better for me to do, because this does look really interesting, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna add it to this video 
I'm going to go on Friday again to this market. I'm going to get two or three different dishes and just add it to this video. So today is Wednesday and now three, two, one. And just like that, it's Friday. So I'm back on Soy Ten Silom with an empty belly and a clear head because I was a little bit scrambled on Wednesday. So I thought, you know what? Let's go back, reset and go again. This is definitely a morning market, people. I've just found another little goodie down an alleyway that I need to check out. But first, I'm going to need my morning coffee. Let's go take a look. Okay, but before I start the next section of the video, I want to say a big thank you to Samuel Harris. Kaz and Sut. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. This video today is for you guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel financially, buying me coffees. Absolutely love you guys. Could not do this without you. But just remember, if you can't afford to or you don't want to financially support the channel, absolutely fine. But please continue to like and share the videos. Doesn't matter whether you think no one's going to see them. It really does help with the algorithm, etc., etc. So thank you guys. This one today is for you. Mwah! Oh, look at this, guys. It's just so nice to see this alive and kicking. All right, so we're going to go for the doi pakod. Dry apple and grapefruit. I did want to get the Myanmar Shan, the fruity one, but they've run out. I should have got this the other day. They've got Brazil, Ethiopia. They've got loads of different ones, all right? So we're going to get that. Latte uh, on the Okay, up. Huh? There's two roads here. There's Ceylon Road, which we came off in the last video. And then today I actually got off at Chong Non Si and walked down Naradiwat and then took a right and then you're at the back of the market. So that's actually quicker if you just want to come to Soy Ten rather than go to Soy Convent at the start of this video. But there's so much stuff around here. I've just spotted a lady with a northern Thai restaurant. Went over there. She's got Lap Kua or Lap Muang. Lana Lap, unbelievable. One of my favorite things in the world. She's got Khao Soe with chicken, pork and beef and she's got Nam Niao. So I'm going to have to stop there. So it looks like I'm going to have to eat a lot today. Guys, a lot today. Right, my coffee's ready. Bye bye. Bye bye. Right, so come and see the guys down at Outstand Coffee. Okay, I'm not just saying it because... I'm not just saying it because they're very nice people. Get to yourselves down to Outstand Coffee Roaster. I've just got the Doi Pakad, which is Mehon Song. This tastes like the Yunnanese one that I got in Sila Cha at Suntime Coffee. Um, I think it's like an anaerobic process. It's like sour, almost alcoholic. It tastes a little bit like wine. Oh. That is insane. Incredible cup. Happy to pay the 90 baht for that. He's even given me a large cup for that. That's the best cup of coffee I've had in months. Anyway, you didn't come here to see me talk about coffee. You came here to see me talk about food. So let's go. All right, guys, I've had to sit down and have a little break because my head is absolutely scrambled. There's so much food here. Um, it's got me confused again. And I'm a quote unquote veteran of Bangkok street food and I, I don't know what to order. So anyone coming down here for the first time might be a little bit stumped. Um, it could have something to do with the fact that I've seen the Northern Thai food outside now and I really want that. So I'm going to go and get it. But I also want to get something in here. I just saw someone eating Khao Khan more. So I went over and had a look and it looks incredible. It's got the, the Kai Lan the Kana, which I love with my Khao Khan more. But then I just saw someone seasoning a bowl of Gue Jab Nam Kwon. Again, now I'm thinking I want Gwe Jab Nam Kwon, but I'm off the crispy pork. Bit tun, the stewed duck. Also looking incredible. I've just seen some lady eating Kua Gai, which is one of my favorite noodles, as you know. They've got uh, the Khao Ging, Khao Rag Ging over there. Looks unbelievable as well. They've got two. They've got one over there and one at the entrance. As you can see, guys, you come down here, you're spoiled for choice. There is so much going on down here. And this is my kind of market. I know I've been doing a lot of like Icon CM and MBK and all those sort of things for you guys. But if you say to me, you've got to go to a food court, I want to come here, corrugated iron roof, open, dark, gritty. This is a bit of me. Okay, so here's something I haven't shown you before, guys. Yum Mu Yo. Mu Yo being the Vietnamese sausage. 
from northeastern Thailand, well, obviously, originally from Vietnam, but heavily used in northeastern Ubon, Udon, that sort of cuisine. Seeing I'm going to Vietnam on Sunday, I want this fresh in my memory. So I'm gonna grab a little salad here. I haven't shown you this before. This mu yo looks legit. Ya mu yo. Kap. Nong jan na kap. Mi wun sen ma? Oh, ya mu sen na? Okay ma? Pit pit na? Pit 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 pit. Kap. All right, guys, so here's the sausage. It's traditionally wrapped in a banana leaf. All right, so into this salad, we're going to have some Chinese celery, some onion, tomatoes, loads and loads of chili, manao, lime juice, pom shurot, one Chai, cup. Chop mug. The Mulya is actually from Ubon and it's one of the best places that you can get it from. <laughs> Alright, so I've gone with Yum Wun Sen. Yum is salad. Wun Sen are the clear glass noodles, cellophane noodles, mung bean noodles. We've got Mu Ya, which is this delicious Vietnamese sausage. We've got some galam, which is cabbage. Some hom yai onions, Chinese celery. And this, if you haven't had it before, just tastes like milder English celery. Uh, what else we got in there? Tomatoes. So we've got some diced up tomatoes. Uh, oh, I've got a spoon. And then the dressing, which is absolutely smashed in chilies. And we've got some minced pork as well. And then we've got that dressing of chili, fish sauce, loads and loads of lime juice, a little bit of sugar and a little bit of pom rod. Right, so first of all, I just want to try a little bit of the sausage by itself. Yeah, that's legit. Really, really peppery and really, really salty. And I thought when I first got to Thailand, I used to avoid it because I thought it was a processed sausage, right? Obviously, some of them are the ones maybe you get in 7-Eleven in the plastic packaging, but the traditional ones are lard and minced pork, like smashed up with pepper, and salt, and then it's wrapped up in a banana leaf and either gr grilled or steamed, and it creates this delicious, fatty, savory, peppery sausage. Mm. You might have had this in Vietnamese noodle soup, the Gue Jab Yuan, but this is top quality stuff. You can really tell the difference between this and something you get out of, out of like 7-Eleven or Big C or something. It's, it's the bit, it's the heat of pepper, like the fresh black peppercorn, so you're getting a bit of heat with it as well. Yum Win Sen, I don't think I've ever done it on a video before. It's one of my favorite salads. I eat it probably at least once a week, twice a week, usually with seafood and minced pork, and it's my go-to if I'm in a hotel. Hotel food's usually rubbish, but they never seem to mess up uh, a, a Yum Win Sen. I told her I like it salty, sour, and spicy. So she's gone really heavy on the chilies. Mm. That's exactly how I like it. Loads of fish sauce, loads of lime juice. I got her to stick in a bit of MSG because I don't care about eating MSG. If you get offended by MSG, you can just say my uh, pong chu rod or my side pong chu rod. The Chinese celery. I absolutely love. If you want to cook with Chinese celery at home and you can't find it, like if you wanted to make this dish at home, buy celery from a greengrocer where all the stalks and the stems are still shooting out the top, peel them off and use those because that's pretty much what this tastes like. 
That's really, really good. Excellent. Ooh. Right, I've got to say, I just watched back a little bit of the footage to make sure I'm in shot, and um, I've had an absolute nightmare with this t-shirt, and I... Jesus. No mean comments about my sweaty t-shirt, you guys. So when you're here, if you want to get this, it's up the middle aisle, so there's stalls on either side, and there's a bit running up the middle with like makeshift stalls, and she's in there about three quarters of the way up if you're coming off the Naladi Wat side. What I need you guys to do is comment in the comment section and let me know, do you want me to do like three or four, maybe even five more videos around this area, maybe wearing a different t-shirt? Because there's just so much food here, like there's just fruit sellers, there's electrical sellers, there's vegetable sellers, there's stalls popping up everywhere with food. Like it's just a really buzzy area, I absolutely love it. So if you want to see a bit more street food from this area, comment in the comment section below and I'll get that done. Right, for now, let's get some of this ahanua. Cup. So this is lap, but this is not lap like you know it, guys. This isn't lap from Isan. This is lap from Chiang Mai. Oh, guys, they've got everything. She's got the Khao Soi. She's got Nam Niao. She's got everything. This just proves, guys, that you should just be coming out. Don't even need to listen to me. Don't listen to any YouTubers. Just get out on the street, armed with a few dishes that you want to try. So you could come down here after watching a few of my videos and all you got to do is just know the dishes that you want and you want to try and just go anywhere and try them. You don't need to go to specific places that I'm telling you to go. Unless I say specifically go there. Just get out and about. I love it. So for some of you newer viewers, especially the ones that have just seen the, maybe like the shopping mall ones that have been going up, um, I am an absolute sucker for Northern Thai food. I can't walk past a Northern Thai restaurant without trying it. Saw this this morning and I was like, oh no, that scrambled my head. So I'm gonna have to get something. As I said, let me know, you want me to come back? I'm gonna just eat everything. I'll eat all the cow soyas, I'll eat all three. I'll eat the nam niao. And I'll, obviously I'm gonna eat the lap now, so I don't need to eat that again. But yeah, I can feel a few videos coming on here. But anyway, let's take a look at this lana lap. Okay, so if you've seen a lap before, and I'll try and put one over the top, um, it's usually minced meat with toasted rice and lime juice. Whereas this is lap from the north. So this is lap kua or lap mun. So we've got pieces of pork. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, she's giving me the kalsoi. She's giving oh, me the kalsoi guy. Oh my God, this looks so good. Okay, so we've got minced pork. We've got ton hom, which is spring onions. A little bit of pak chi coriander. We've got intestines in here. We've got tap, which is liver. So this is like a real legit one, covered in a little spice mix. And the main spices are DP, which is a long pepper, long black pepper, and makwen, which is like the Thai cousin of Szechuan peppercorns. And then she's brought me the cow soy over, even though I told her I was going to come back next week and eat it. She didn't believe me. So curried noodles, curried chicken noodles. And I like the way she looked. A little bit of fresh coconut milk on top. You can tell it's fresh because it's kind of like gone clumpy and like mottled. The chicken is actually not being stewed in with the curry. It's actually being cooked separately in like Chinese spices, like a, like a quit the old guy. We've got those crispy fried egg noodles on top. Again, ton hom and pak chi on top with some red onions and yet those flat egg noodles, like fettuccine style noodles. Wow. The broth looks really good. It doesn't look too creamy. I'm not mad on those creamy, creamy cow soyas like Helen, my wife, likes. Oh, this looks good. Pak dong. Pak dong, pickled mustard greens. So these have got to go in. She hasn't given me a lime though. That's going to go in. All right, so we've got a lime. We're going to squeeze that in because we know it needs a lime. 
I don't think she wasn't ready to give me everything because I'm not actually meant to be eating the cow, so am I? And then I'm gonna I'm gonna chuck in a bit of the the picalian, the mountain chilies. Then we'll see what that does. Was not ready for this at all, guys. Oh, that looks dream. Okay, so I was confused. I was going to eat the lapkoa first. Well, I only ordered the lapkoa, so that's what I was going to eat. But I'm going to eat the cow soy because I don't want it going all, all, all funky on me. Lam tete. Mm. All right. So I'm going to put a little, a little bit more. More, more lime juice in it. Very well spiced. It's a, it's a touch on the sweet side for me, as you would kind of get a lot in Bangkok. Yeah, it's quite sweet. Heavy, heavy, heavy on the fish sauce. Roasted shallots. Mm. And there could be some shrimp paste in there as well. But the spices. Coriander seed, heavy, heavy on the on the cardamom. Yeah, heavy on the cardamom. And quite spicy. Right onto the lap kua. This is one of my favorite dishes in Thailand. I absolutely love it. I love ma quen. It's so, so, so rich. Spicy as hell. You get a load of different textures again from the minced meat. Not the little bits of offal going through it. So if you're not an offal fan, don't come and get this. Got that creamy liver. I'm not a massive fan of the uh, of the intestines, as you know. I don't mind stomach. Again, you got onions going through it. Spring onions. But all the flavours coming from that deep spice mix with that DP pepper. It's hard to describe these little Macwen peppercorns. I just got one in my mouth again. They're like a kind of weaker Szechuan peppercorn. Your whole mouth doesn't go like with a peppercorn. It doesn't go numb and stuff, but you're gonna have to get that in and try it for yourself. So there you go. Come down to Soy Ten. Also, Naladi Wat Soy Nung. It's the same thing. I'd say come down to Naladi Wat Soy Nung actually, because there's loads more stuff on this street. You can even get a taste of the North from Pinay. All I would say, I wish from my personal taste, I've got to be honest with you guys, um, that was a little bit too sweet for me. But as I said, my wife would have absolutely loved that. I just have like an intolerance to sweet things that are usually savoury. But the lap core was excellent. The yum I just had in the market, unbelievable. I've kind of even forgotten that I went to Soy Convent at the start of this video, which was also great. So Ceylon, great spot. Remember, this is part two, so there will be a part three down in Bangrak at the bottom end of the Ceylon Road. Hopefully, that video won't be as long as this one, which is probably about 40 minutes long by now. But I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below. Tell me where you want me to do my next video. Do you want me to stay around here? Do you want me to head somewhere else? Let me know. I'll get that done. For now, I'll see you in the next one.